Welcome, Bridgewater College Education 450 students. In this screencast, you're going to learn how to get started in setting up your online portfolio. To do so, we're going to use a site called Live Binders. And so we'll begin our screencast by going to that site, www.livebinders.com. The first time you come, you'll have to sign up for an account. The account is free. So I'll click on Sign Up. And of course, I'll have to give a username, my Bridgewater College email address, and so forth, and create a password for myself, uh, and, and so forth. Uh, I've already done that, so I'm going to just simply sign up on the login page. And here's what the first screen will look like. Well, I, I have a binder that I created for a previous class, but you're not going to have anything the first time you come. But all you'll do is to click on Start a Blank Binder. So let's do that. It asked me to give a name to my binder. Now, in my example that I'm going to show you now, I'm going to create a binder as if I am a prospective teacher who wants to be teaching high school math, which is what my background is. So I'm going to call my name of my binder uh, J. Hills Portfolio. And this description is simply a portfolio for J. Hill. Tags are what a, a searching site such as Google would, would use in, in finding your site. Actually, although our site will be public, I'm not going to worry about tag. As far as category, there's, a, there's two options here. And pick your, your, your choice. You can either say personal or education. I'll leave mine personal since this is going to be a portfolio. Now the next choice is something you can change. Um, you could choose to keep it private for uh, a while until uh, you're ready to display it. But at some point you do have to make it public and, and I'll show you uh, on a different screen how you can make the changes from public to private. If you choose private you can also type in an access key which you would then share with someone else if they wanted to visit your site. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to make mine public. There's nothing on here that uh, I mind the, for the public to see. And it doesn't matter how you answer um, the, the next one. So let's go ahead and create the new binder. Okay, there's nothing here. Live Binders uses tabs and subtabs. And you need to have at least 11 tabs. Now, the 11 tabs uh, are going to be tabs of um, from the in-task standards. So for example, I need to have a tab and maybe my very first tab, I'll change its name to learning, learner development. That's in-task standard number one. Now I don't want to simply call this in-task standard number one because many people won't have any idea what that is. For my second tab, I'm going to have learning differences. So these are simply going to be the in-task standards that you have studied here at Bridgewater. Learning environments is the third one. And again, you'll need to have all 10 in-task standards. You also need to have an, an additional tab, which is just about you. Uh, something that would contain your resume and maybe an about me section. And to add more tabs, notice on the edit menu down here, I've got an item for tabs. So I can click on the tabs and I can add a tab. So I am going to add a tab here and I'm going to call this about me. I would prefer that this tab be first though. So I do want to move it. Now on the edit tab, I can reposition by moving it left and left and left until now that's the first tab. I can continue adding tabs. For example, uh, in task standard number four is content knowledge. So I would add tab and I would make this content knowledge. I simply click content knowledge. This isn't in the exact place that I want it. I actually want it to be over to the right because I'm putting my in task standards in order and so forth. So I'm going to fill in the remaining tabs for the remaining in-task standards now. 
Okay, I think you can see now that I have added all 10 in task standards as tabs, plus the 11th tab, which is going to be the About Me tab. The next thing that we want to look at on the Edit menu is maybe making some changes in how the binder looks. So I'm going to skip to Binder Properties down here. And you might notice that when I go to Binder Properties, I see those items that I filled in when I first set up this binder. Here's where you can change the access from public to private or private to public, uh, as you may wish. It asks for my, my name here, which I'm going to put in my full name here. Now, on this page, you can also change the color. Notice there's a color tab here. So I'll click on color theme, and it allows me to pick a different color. I might pick uh, steel red. For mine. Update. And when you do that, you'll see that, sure enough, the colors of my background has changed now to, to red. You might notice that when you finish with all your changes, be sure to click the Update button just to make sure that your uh, Live Binder was updated with the changes that you most recently made. And when you're done with the Edit menu, just close the edit menu. We can close it right here. And we can get back to the edit menu by coming over here and clicking on the yellow button. Otherwise, what we see here is the live binder in the format that a person would see it if they visited it. Speaking of that, under view, notice that there's one called present. This is where you take a look at your binder in exactly the same way that a person is going to see it when they come online. So let's present ours and we'll see that here's our live binder, here are the different tabs. Of course there's nothing here yet, there's no content in them yet, there's going to be in a minute. And we'll, we'll do that with the next uh, screencast. So at this point you could go ahead and get your online portfolio set up. But then be sure to view the next screencast where you'll learn to add content to each of the tabs. See you then.